my mustache is getting too long. And it starts to look, I don't know. I just feel like I get like a pedo stash, you know? Anyway. It's not good. Hello. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the average film enjoyer. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, just talking about my need to shave. Uh, welcome to the average film enjoyer. Um, this is your favorite film podcast, I assume, because you're here, you're listening, you're watching, wherever. What did that do in, in uh, where is he from? What? The homie that's watched every Oh, episode. the guy from Brussels who's Brussels. listened and watched to every single episode. Shout, Shout out, out to you. Man. We haven't shouted you out in a while. Shout out to you. Gotcha, bro. Um, and yeah, welcome back. It's going to be we're a good episode. We're going to peak today. Yeah, we're finishing up our Nolan uh, watch through crazy because it feels like it just started yeah um we are also gonna cover some movie news a couple trailers we wanted to talk about um and then give you the next director uh we will be covering in our director deep dive series um i'm quite looking forward to this director i don't know about you evan but um, Trey, Trey ferdinand just responded to it and said where's the jeff profit option Oh man, we should do a Jeff Prophet director deep dive. He's got so many movies. Uh, really? How many? A lot. He pumps like four or five out a year. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So we are gonna do. Uh, yeah. Let's just get into it. But first of all, Evan, how are you? How's your week been? What you been up to? It's been a busy week. I worked like Monday to Friday, which I usually don't. I know yeah. it's like a, a petty complaint. <laughs> uh, I am off for the next three days. The Oscars are on Sunday, and I'm so excited to hang with the Real Talk boys and watch them. And that's yeah, gonna did you go place laugh. your bets in the? I haven't yet because I they posted it on when I was at work, and I couldn't do it on my phone because I don't have an account. And I was like, I'll some of the there. some of the categories, I was surprised what people are voting for and how many yeah. people voted for it. I'm going to do it soon. Um, uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm super excited for the Oscars. That should be fun. And yeah, going to watch some movies. I've been watching some peak. Uh, last night, I watched some absolute peak, which we'll yeah. talk about later. Uh, yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Um, I have a desk coming today for my room, finally. Uh, I'm going to pull the trigger on a chair of some kind. Probably a gaming chair. There's some nice cheap ones on eBay. Um, nice. Love Dude, eBay. I want to get a Herman Miller so bad, but they're like fifty. Those are nice. Bucks. That's so yeah. Expensive. Tim Tim the Tap Man is sponsored by them oh, because yeah. I remember while I was watching dur- him during COVID every day instead of doing school, there was like one day where he's <laughs> like, "I have an announcement to make. I am now sponsored by Herman Miller." There's I don't a, know why my Tim the Tapman impression just turned into a Trump impression, but that's okay. <laughs> it really did. There's a Herman I have Miller. an announcement to make. <laughs> Probably. There's Probably. A, there's they, a they want to build a big wall, a big wall in China. <laughs> Dude, oh my god. Before I get back to Herman Miller, me and my brother used to watch this video of, it was a compilation of every time Trump said China and it made me cry <laughs> laughing because it was like four or five minutes dude of water. China, China China so oh my god it's so funny I will not comment on where like any of the pol- political parts but there has been no one more entertaining in a debate than Donald Trump I like I remember I'm Canadian when I I remember when I used to like when I before I got sober If I had a long day at work, I'd grab a six pack of beers from the store and go home and watch old Trump debates. And it was a blast because you have all these people like I'm the delegate from uh, Massachusetts and I support uh, public school systems. Uh, And I'm the delegate from Florida and I support uh, more gun rights. And then Donald Trump would go up, come up and he goes, Rand Paul is ugly. He's and Paul looks like a dog. And yeah, that's a bit Shane Gillis does. He's very funny. You Love Shane. Neutral, I'll say it. Fuck you, Trump. Yeah. Yeah, he's the worst. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about some movies, bro. The first thing, movie news wise, I need to talk about is our goat, Hideo Kojima. 
director, game director of maybe the one of the most famous games of all time, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, you're muted, Trey. Uh, more recently known for... You're still muted. All right, did you there just you keep go. going? Yeah, I, I kept going. Could you hear me? Excellent. I can hear okay. you now. Uh, I'll keep going. Uh, yeah, I need to talk about the GOAT, Hideo Kojima. Mm -hmm. uh, director of maybe one of the most famous games of all time, Metal Gear Solid. More recently, Death Stranding, which I adore. Mm -hmm. And when when the Death Stranding movie comes out, it's gonna be like a four or five episode, four or five hour episode, because it's one of my favorite games of all time. But that's a conversation for is another it day. A, is it an RPG? Mm, it's hard to explain. It's, I'm gonna look okay. it up right now and maybe start no, playing no, no. it after this episode. Trey, it's huh. it's not on Xbox. It's what? on PC, PlayStation. Let me give you the rundown of this game really quick. It stars. Norman oh, I Reedus. can play it on my Mac. You could. It okay. Let me let me do a little sidebar about Death Stranding. Come yeah. Play it. This game stars Norman Reedus, Lindsay Wagner, uh, Norman Reedus. Sorry, I already said Norman Reedus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Norman Reedus. It's like that trailer yeah. for the new Bong Joon Ho TV show where it's like <laughs> yeah, Robert Downey Jr. Robert. and Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, uh, Mads Mikkelsen. Um, yes, I'm in. The cast is beyond stacked. Conan O'Brien's in it. Uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a really Massive W. Okay, so the plot of this movie is that a big apocalypse happens, mm -hmm. and Norman Reedus's job is to reconnect America by walking across the world, the 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 country, and going to all of these states and distribution centers and bringing them like online because everyone's disconnected. This game came out before the pandemic. Somehow Kojima like predicted that the entire world would be segmented and disconnected because mm -hmm. this came out in November of 2019, like four That's months insane. before the fucking pandemic. It's That's crazy. Insane. Um, it's a walking simulator tray. You play a UPS delivery, man. There's combat and fighting, like there's bad guys and guns, but you load up the packages and you walk them across the United States. It's a very cathartic game. Is it, it just like one of those? It's just like a vibe. It is a a vibe. Oh my god, what a vibe! Also, Margaret Qualley is a very prominent role. Leia Sedu is in it too. Um, big stack. Let's go cast. check this out. The sequel has um, Dakota Fanning's going to be in it, and oh, George okay. Miller is also in it. Guillermo del Toro is in the original, by the way. George Miller um, is that the Mad Max guy? Yeah, and also yeah. yeah Guillermo del Toro's in the original game. W. But yeah, it's a very cathartic experience, and it's it's really a very human story about like yeah. just human connection. Um, anyway, I love Kojima. He put a quote out about Dune 2. This is a big sidebar, but we're back to Dune. Yeah. He said, he, so you, you know his movie reviews, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so when he reviews a movie, if he hates it, he'll write, I watched blank. Like his Madame Review re review, Madame Web review says, mm -hmm. watched Madame Web. Here's what he has to say about Dune 2. Even as a movie buff, I was beginning to think it was time for me to start watching movies on my smartphone or tablet. However, when I watched Dune Part 2, my rigid ways of thinking crumbled like sand. It was meticul it meticulously depicts the non-existent world of Iraq as bringing it to life with unprecedented detail and realism. While portraying revolution and love, fear, and awe on the same axis, it magnificently captivates destruction, aestheticism, in beautiful layers. This film shouts, this is cinema, and provides the spice that we need to live. This masterpiece of Denis will likely become a resistance that will significantly delay the spread of subscription services. That's what a massive a W. What a massive W. Kojima gets it. I don't know if you know this, Trey. Mm -hmm. um, Hideo Kojima infamously wanted to be a movie director. Yeah. But he made video games instead. And it's very, uh, it's very like, remin like you can see it in his games. The, mm -hmm. the, if you go on YouTube and search up Death Stranding cutscenes, it's 11 hours long. 
That's insane. He he wants to make movies, and you can see it in his movie reviews, where when he loves a movie, he will write like these kinds of very passionate statements about them. And it makes me so happy. The way he says this masterpiece of Denis will become a resistance that will delay the spread of subscription services. Yeah. Oh my god, what a walking king. Like, I love him so much. Mm-hmm. He did um, write a very weird review about Argyle that was very positive, but like maybe oh, he that's watched unfortunate. it. And maybe he watched it right after like Madame Web or something. But yeah, I wanted to shout that out because yeah, that's a W. We we have such a weird twenty twenty four has not been good for movie releases so far, except for Dune and like maybe some random stuff like Love Lies Waiting comes out soon. That'll be P. Yeah. But- it's been shit. Night Swim, Argyle, Madam Web, it's all been bad. So mm-hmm. it makes me happy to see Kojima be so vocal about how much, how important Dune is. Um, yeah. Yeah, that sounds the next, sweet. The next thing I want to touch on, I don't, are you an anime fan? Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a fan, but I'm not like Will. Shout out Will from the uh, Fistful of Films podcast, you weirdo. I'm not like gonna pull out my uh, rosary and say back with the devil anytime anybody puts it on. Um, anyway, even though me and Trey are not big on anime, we can't deny the tragic passing of Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball. Oh yeah, that's a... Really sad, um... It sucks. That's a bit. That's a very, very, very impactful death. Like th- this, even though me and Tra- I've seen maybe a couple episodes of it, but mm-hmm. it, it, you can't deny the impact this man has had on the world. Thousand percent. Um, and I saw a quote. I don't have. Oh, here it is. Uh, his wife released a statement. I think it's his wife. She said, I don't want to believe it. My head is empty because I don't want to think about it. Even so, every time I see Goku, I remember what Toriyama Sensei said to me. Uh, You will take care of Goku, won't you? I cherish that moment. It makes me think, I will stay by Goku's side until my strength runs out completely. Sensei, please watch over us from the heavens. I hope you depart in peace. You can't deny this man's impact on the world and media. Everyone knows Dragon Ball. So, yeah, very sad, and I, I love to see, in the wake of his passing, so many people on the internet rising up and just like, um, you know, coming and supporting each other. There's, uh, I wanna, yeah, he, he designed. Uh, one of the characters from one of my favorite games of all time, I believe. Uh, Chrono Trigger. Hmm. What game? It, it's called Chrono Trigger. It's a time. Oh, I thought travel... that was a character. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, it's it's a time travel RPG, and it's oh, cool. amazing. It's absolutely flawless. Yeah, he designed the characters for it. It's such yeah. a funny game and weird and. It's it's awesome. Uh, oh, quick uh, tangent, real quick. Have you ever yeah. played High Life? Did you play that when that came out? I don't think so. High it was Life. like done by the guys who did Rick and Morty. Oh, High on Life. I have High, it down- yeah. I have it downloaded on my Xbox, but I haven't played it yet. Oh yeah, you got to get on that. I finished. I, really want I, to. I took like a week to grind out that campaign. That game's a blast. It's really fun. It's really fun. Um, um, the Halloween TV series. Yeah, um, one bookmarked. Yeah, it's so stupid. But this is a glimmer of hope. Uh, it will be a creative reset completely, and will be going back to the original film. So they're basically any Halloween content that has ma- been made in the past. They're retconning all of it and just starting from the beginning. Which they already did with the last David Gordon Green trilogy. And who knows? No, because they included the original. This is like going back before the original, like if a Halloween movie was never made. Right. I am cautiously optimistic just because of how peak 2018's Halloween was that this will be good. This is it's A24, I think, honestly. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but 
I'm gonna watch it. You know me. I don't like Halloween. I've yeah. stated multiple times that I don't like the character. Except for uh, uh, Halloween Revelations or whatever that last Res- one is. Resurrections, with, dude. We with, gotta watch with it. With Busta Rhymes. Ah, oh, so peak. So, so peak. peak. <laughs> Hi. Um, God, that movie's hilarious. I'll talk yeah, about that later well, on what I've been watching recently. Oh, you watched it? Oh shit. Yeah, dude. Peak. I finished like all um, the Halloween movies. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I'm ex- I'm I'm cautiously excited because I love Michael Myers as a character. He's very scary. I just don't like the mm-hmm. side characters and the hum like I I wanna see the humans, but like you know what I mean. Like the the normal people in the movies I find yeah not engaging anyway. Um one thing that is gonna gas both of us up Ben Affleck, mm-hmm. John Barenthal, J.K. Simmons, Cynthia Adele Robinsons will all return for the the accountant too. Yes. Yeah. W. I'm, that's a that's a clear W. The um, accountant is peak. It's slept on. It is so good. I can I need to watch it again, bro. It's so peak. Oh my god, I love it. Um. Uh, I know you don't care about this, but Korra <laughs> from Avatar: The Last Airbender is at being added to Fortnite in the new Battle Pass. When that. does that? When does that come out? I need to log back into Fortnite. Um, get the new Battle Pass. Um, I definitely don't play Fortnite. I just get the Battle Pass every season. Um, let's um, see. Let's see. I got something to add on to something we've talked about a few times now. We've got a cast update for the SNL 1975 yeah. movie. Yeah, I just saw that Nicholas, Nicholas Braun, Braun will be as Jim Henson. Holy shit. Yeah, that's a W. Nicholas Braun I love Nicholas Braun. As the creator of the Muppets, like what? Mm-hmm. W? Mm-hmm. That's going to be sick. I, I, I am so excited for this movie, bro. Oh my god. There's yeah. something that is a pure travesty that has occurred about the Oscars uh, luncheon event. I don't know if you saw this. Messi, the dog from Anatomy yeah, dude, Ball, has that was not awesome. been invited because people were people were complaining that the wait dog he wasn't be invited. No, he's not invited because people are complaining about it. So he's not invited to the luncheon event, which is fucking in. Sorry, I'm sorry, Trey's mom. This dog is a masterclass actor. Dude, he w- he gave a better performance than most people from yeah. last year. <laughs> Agreed. It's a travesty. This dog was, the dog was at the Golden Globes, and everyone was so happy about it. What is going on? That, oh my god, that's insane. Like, that is insane. Oh, you got to be a bitter person to to say this dog can't come. That sucks. Yeah. Um, um oh. Do you have one? No, that was it. I was just going to go okay. to talk about our uh, trailers. Yeah, I got one I want to talk about. Noel Baumbach has a new film coming out on Netflix starring George Clooney, Adam Sandler, Laura Dern, Billy Cudrup, and Riley Kiro. Keo? Oh, Keo, it, did, did you know she's, uh, like, the granddaughter of Elvis or nie- really? grandniece or something? Oh, yeah. I didn't. Uh, yeah. This is a coming-of-age film about adults. I adore Noam Baumbach. I, uh, he makes peak cinema. Um, Francis Haw is one of my favorite movies of all time. I mm-hmm. love the Meyerowitz stories. Him and Greta Gerwig cook together, and uh, yeah, this this movie I I cannot wait. Yeah, it's gonna be peak. Adam Sandler has shown his dramatic chops, and I love George Clooney and Laura Dern and all, Billy Cudrip and Riley Keough. Like, I'm so excited for that. That sounds peak as hell. Uh, one more thing, Io Edebiri has been cast. Uh, sorry, not yeah, yet. will voice Envy in Inside Out too. I'm kind of split on this movie. I don't think it's necessary. No, me neither. Especially since the first one is so good. It's so peak. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. But Ayo um, Itabiri, I love her. So. She's she's hilarious. She's she awesome. Yeah. And then the last thing I want to talk about, Harvey, Javier Bardem dropped a god-tier quote. Dude, uh, I saw this. Yeah, Javier Bardem, Bardem starred in Dune and The Little Mermaid for each of his kids. I do Dune for him, I do Mermaid for her, and I get the paycheck for both. What a yeah. goat. What a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Walking movie, bro. Oh my god. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's, that's um, all I got. Uh, do we want to talk about our movie trailers? Yeah, we got two we so, want to touch on today. Fallout. We got a trailer for Fallout with uh, yes. Walton Goggins. Kyle MacLachlan is in this. Uh, Barry also. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you would give your, give us your thoughts on this, Evan. Yeah, so I've played a few of the Fallout games. I haven't finished any of them just because RPGs can be hard for me to lock into. I think mm-hmm. Trey would adore the Fallout games based on his love for Skyrim. Um, God, greatest video game ever made, Skyrim. You, you, you need to get on Fallout. Uh, this trailer is phenomenal. Fallout is a RPG that has the vibes. Mm-hmm. This is a post-apocalyptic game that has the vibes of the 70s because these people were locked in vaults for hundreds of years mm-hmm. after a nuke goes off, but like all they know is the classic vibes. Um, yeah. I... Uh, when you watch the trailer, you know that song's like, I don't want to set the world on fire. Yeah. That that song. So that's the theme song from Fallout 3. Um, oh. I, what, doesn't one of them do uh, The Wanderer by Dion? Yeah. yeah God, that's dude. Fallout, that's Fallout 4. Shout out to Dion and Dion and the Belmonts for making some yeah. Bop 50 songs. So, um, again, Fallout has the vibes of the 50s, the 60s, 70s, because these people that are living in vaults, the vault dwellers, that's what they know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my god, am I excited for this show. Even yes. though I don't love the video games, it's more the gameplay I don't love. The vibes and the characters, Walton Goggins looks like a menace. I'm so excited to see him. He was peaking mm-hmm. like... Uh, and Jonathan Nolan, like Westworld season one and some of season two are God tier television. Mm-hmm. And I think that the fall off in that show kind of negates for some people how good the earlier seasons are. So yeah. I am beyond like I, I was like, oh, a fallout show is coming out. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I don't like the games that much, but like uh it's cool i watched this trailer and i was like maybe i should replay the follow games and i'll like them more because like oh my god this trailer is sick it looks funny and creepy the atmosphere is amazing the yeah the comedy the violence everything walt walton goggins is he he can do no wrong i am so beyond excited for this one more month uh comes out uh april 11th w I will and be watching. All, all of the episodes are dropping at once, which yes, um, it's, I can't it's handle it week by week. I know it's good and bad because it's like you ha- you feel this pressure to binge them so you don't get spoiled, but also it's like I yeah, I will not I will I not be logging movies for like two days. Yeah, so I am super super excited for the follow show. What do you think, Trey? Having not played the games, I'm, what do you think of this? Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, I've watched a lot of gameplay videos from the Fallout games, so I, I so I like the vibes. Um, I like the exosuit, like and that that whole thing. Um, yeah, I love anything with Walton Goggins. Um, my boy is goaded. Shout out uh, American Ultra, where he plays the laugher. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. The vibes seem cool. It looks like it's going to be a solid, like, futuristic sci-fi action show. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. I, I'm anticipating the the de- the the writers of the show have explicitly said this is going to be the equivalent of Fallout Five because it's a new story. They're not going back. It, mm-hmm. It's going to be something new, which is really exciting because every new Fallout story, like. I've played the first two, three hours of every follow game. It's like, I, I mean, the first two follow games are like top down, you know, strategy games, but three, four, yeah. uh, three and four new Vegas, new Vegas is peak. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm really excited. I hope Jonathan Nolan keeps the juice going and it doesn't get the Westworld effect. Um, even though I still like Westworld past the first couple seasons, yeah, I'm really, really excited. And I wasn't that excited before this trailer. And now I'm like, shit, I need to boot up the, the Fallout games now. So, yeah. Cool. Let's, um, uh, next, last trailer before we get into our reviews for the day. Yeah. Uh, one of my most anticipated films for the year, it, which was right behind Doom 2. My... Yeah. yeah. Um, Late Night with the Devil, starring David Dasmalchian. Um, this is from the producers of Paranormal Activity and Barbarian. 
Um, it's yeah, you- been said uh, to be a mix of Roseberry's Baby and Network, which, Evan, I don't know if you've seen Network. I haven't, but um, I watched Cindy it. Lumet film. Oh, dude, it's excellent. It's so damn good. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, first of all, we get David Dasmalchian in a lead role, which is a massive W, um, a very underutilized actor, in my opinion. Um, it's weird because he's he's in freaking everything. Yeah, but he's always and he's, like... And he's amazing at everything. Yeah, he's always like a really small role. Um, yeah, I loved him in The Suicide Squad. Oh, oh God, he's God. so funny. And even in Oppenheimer, like... You oh, is Borden? Love, yeah, you want to love David Dasmalchian, but then he's just like an asshole in that movie. Yeah, or um, in Prisoners. And Prisoners. And oh. then I want to shout out uh, Dark Knight. He's in... yeah briefly like he's such a great character actor and i'm so mm-hmm. excited and this trailer looks like it has the vibes it looks scary and weird and messed up and yeah I, i'm so excited and i'm very shutter, excited as well this has shutter, is this a shutter exclusive it's a shutter movie i don't know if it's gonna go to streaming or uh, if it goes theater. to streaming right away we need to watch party it together we will, yeah, absolutely. I'm hell yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm quite excited for this. Um, I was kind of out on Shutter movies, but recently, as of yesterday, I watched a few of them that were actually not terrible, um, which I'll talk about later. Yeah. Um, also, so, so man, I'm definitely looking up, forward to this. We need to shout out the holy trinity of shark movies on the podcast, which I'm assuming he means Megalodon, uh, Jurassic Shark, and Shark Exorcist. <clears throat> One of those uh, is peak, one of them is shit, and one of them is absolute god tier awful. Yeah. But shout out you, Ferdinand. We love you. Thank you for We do love you. Thank you for voting. He said he voted, so thank you for voting. Uh yeah, shout out Ferdinand. Continuing to bring um, the heat. Anyway, yeah, this yeah. this trailer blew me away. Tra- uh before we started this pod, I was like, Trey, I need to send you this trailer for follow so we can talk about it. And he goes, I need to send you this trailer for this Davis Das Melchian mm-hmm. movie. And I was like, Oh bet. And we didn't talk about the trailer, so this is like our first time. But yeah, man, this trailer, it just looks like it has the vibes. It looks sick. And, and David Das looks, looks, looks haunting. Like Yeah. Oh I, man. I'm very I'm, excited. It reminds me of uh, Robert De Niro in Joker, almost, but then turned yeah. into a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm so stoked for this movie. Uh, yeah, me as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So before we get into our reviews for today, um, we're gonna talk about apparently Vanity Fair not knowing what the hell they're talking about. Yes. Um, you want to give us the quote, Evan? Um, so I saw this post and it's been in hot debate around, I'm not going to open the article, but it says vanity fair. Ryan Gosling has always been charming, but with Ken, he finally gets to be funny. That's insane. Trey's mom, close your ears. Are you out of your fucking mind? He has been a comedic genius in multiple movies. Yeah. Yeah. He Here, is- let me na- let let me name a few movies where Ryan Gosling is absolutely hysterical. Yeah. Barbie, La La Land, The yeah. Nice Guys, The Big Short, Crazy Stupid Love, <laughs> Lars and the Real Girl. He's and he's always the funniest, dude. He okay. The Big Short is not a inherently funny movie. He makes it funny. That oh God, a- he's so good. That is a depressing. Do you movie. see him? Do you see his eyes? Of course he's good. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, God. it's so funny. Like, that movie is tragic. Like, it's about a housing crisis that de- decimated the world. He is hysterical in that movie. Yeah. Crazy, stupid love. The backyard scene is... A- and i uh, sorry. Before I talk about the backyard scene, his dynamic with Steve Carell is... Yeah, where he slaps him. They Like, he is so freaking funny. Why are you wearing New Balance? Movie. Who are you? And Steve then- Jobs? And then the nice guys, one of the greatest comedies of all time. Shout out, thousand Cash. percent, thousand percent. Um, it might be the greatest will, comedy ever made. It might be. We we will be doing a nice guys game night double feature with Cash at some point coming soon. And Carl, TM, like, and Carl. Hopefully, Carl. Yeah, I need to call yeah. Carl on a, a dumbass. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, the the nice guys is h- hilarious. It's it's yeah. one of the funniest movies of all time. It, I I cannot fathom this article existing. Who put this out that they don't watch movies? And like, I haven't read the article, but <laughs> I saw this headline and I was like, huh? I don't even want to bother reading this. Yeah, he's not like. Oh wait, it's literally one paragraph. What's to uh, say? Ryan Gosling if is nothing if not consistent. A two-time Oscar nominee, he's credibly played everything from a young idealist to a sensitive loner to eg- enigmatic badass to quirky weirdos, but he's never delivered anything like his performance in Barbie, which is arguably his best work yet. That's an L. That's a massive L. As Ken, Gosling delivers real depth to a character who could have easily been a goofy sidekick. Uh, what's more striking about his performance as Ken, though, is that he gets to be funny. Not quirky or rom-com funny, but really funny. Okay, if you want to talk about rom-com funny, you can take crazy stupid love out of the equation. The nice guys is not quirky it's, funny. It's it pure is, comedy. It is pure comedy. He is so <laughs> funny in that movie. You could delete crazy stupid <laughs> love and this headline would still be absolutely bonkers. Yeah. But, the Gosling is the goat, and yeah, I reject. Why? Are, why? Are, why are you all wet? I was I'm in the jet. pool. Why were you in the pool? <laughs> I was talking to the mermaids. What were you doing while I was working? Um, yeah, it's it, that's insane. And then, dude, um, there's that scene in the the Big Short where he goes, "Object, object to the tits." <laughs> dude, so oh my god he's so this funny. makes me want to rewatch the big short but just watch his scenes uh also, um a little known fact the big short is in my top 10 movies of all time really is an ex- bale is an ex- Chris- okay christian bale is so damn good in that movie yeah okay so uh lore drop i'm an economics major i have a degree in economics i studied mm-hmm. this housing crisis in school yeah so this is a topic that is naturally very interesting to me and also this movie is ridiculously entertaining it's a long movie the pacing is insane mm-hmm. adam mckay i don't want to hear a bit of slander the big short is a flawless movie it's like a 98 out of 100 if i had to grade it for me mm-hmm. i adore that movie it's perfect. Yeah, Have you so, seen Vice? Yeah, I love Vice. Vice is awesome. Vice is so um, peak. Me, my dad, and my brother went to go see Vice in theaters. I haven't watched it since theaters. I want to watch it again. But there's that one scene. It's like right in the ha- middle half of the movie. Yeah, where they it, roll like, the credits. They roll the credits. What a genius decision, dude. Adam McKay is such a goat. Oh, my God. Yeah. That scene is so funny. I love Adam I, McKay. I love Adam McKay. And he, um. Yeah, anyway, we we really uh I had to go pee, so we we cut it. <laughs> um I so you I didn't like, have to say that. I was like, dude, we need to talk about we need to talk about Adam McKay. And Ryan <laughs> it had to be done, dude. Uh okay. <laughs> anyway, let's let's talk about yeah. uh, Dunkirk because all yeah. the going to take longer. So let's talk about Dunkirk. Yeah, so today is our final day on our uh, Nolan director deep dive. Um, we have covered him as a director um, from following all of which uh, we covered in our first episode. And then today we're going to be covering Oppenheimer. So basically all of his feature length films we have covered and talked about. You can go back in our on our YouTube channel and find all of them. Um, if you have a specific Nolan movie you want to hear us talk about. Um, and if you want to hear me down talk myself from a four star to a two and a half star for Inception, okay. what a conversation that I kept going and going and I'm like, man, this, I give it too much credit. This movie is not that good. If you um, want to hear me push Inception from a five star to a six star, go watch the Inception episode. Yeah, it's mid. And um, if you want to hear us talk about Interstellar, which is peak, peak. Uh, also true. listen to that episode. If you want yeah. to hear us glaze memento, go listen to that. Like, yeah. We glazed that hardcore. Yeah. Go listen to um, So today is our, kind of our war. We're calling it our war episode. Um, we're doing Chris Nolan's two more. Re- he usually dips his toe into sci-fi, thriller, uh, stuff like that. Um, but today, 
uh, we were talking about his two movies where he goes a uh, more realistic route. He does true stories. Uh, so we are going to start this episode off with Dunkirk. Um, this film came out in 2017. Um, it has Fionn Whitehead, Tom Hardy, Mark Rylance, Kenneth Branagh, Killian Murphy, Barry Keoghan, Harry yeah. Styles... Um, who I really wish would have died. God, I hate him. Oh, okay. Let's let's pump the brakes on that. We'll talk about that later, but What? He's like so annoying in this movie. He needs to just shut up. He's fine. Uh, um, yes. Uh L L L L Shut up. Shut up. Uh this has a three point eight overall on Letterbox with an IMDB score of seven point eight. Um I think this is one of Nolan's lower rated. Um which I really don't understand. Um The story of the miraculous evacuation of Allied soldiers from Belgium, Britain, Canada, and France who were cut off and surrounded by the German army from the uh, breach beaches and harbor of Dunkirk between May 26th and June 4th during uh, during World War II in 1940. Um, yeah, so essentially, like 300,000 soldiers, I think it was, were basically trapped um, on this beach, um, and they were being pushed against by German by a German battalion. And, uh, they were like, you can literally see England from, they talked about how they can see England from the beach, like across the water. Um, and they're bringing in all these battleships, all these destroyers to try to get these guys, but they can only bring in like one at a time to get these guys off the beach. Um, and they do a, uh, like civilian reserve call, or something essentially what ends up happening um and this happened in real life it's really cool uh is that um thousands of civilians from england ended up getting on their own private boats uh sailboats uh really anything that floats and going over into the war zone and um picking up as many soldiers as they could um it's a very hopeful, inspiring story. It ends on a good note. Um, Evan, you want to give us your opening thoughts before we get into the nitty gritty? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the first thing before I touch on my thoughts, I really want to chat about Mr. Quentin Tarantino, who has publicly revered this film and really loves it. And I want Base to read, Tarantino. Uh, read, I want to read a quote. It's his second favorite film from the 2010s. Um, so let me read this quote he has to say about it. I had an interesting experience the first time, uh, the fir- with the first couple t- of times Tarantino said of this film. The first time I saw it, I don't know what I was thinking the first time. I just dealt with the spectacle of it of all. I couldn't deal with anything else but the spectacle of it all. Mm-hmm. I like the movie, but anything but the spectacle almost numbed me to my experience. I don't think anything I felt was emotional. I was awed by it, but I didn't know what I was awed by until it was until the third time uh, that I could see past the spectacle into the people, the stories about, I could finally see through the trees a little bit. And I think this is really emblematic of Dunkirk because Technically, this film is a masterclass. I've seen mm-hmm. this film three times. I saw it twice in 70 millimeter when it first came out, and since then, I have not seen it. It's been seven years, or yeah, six years, whatever, six and a half years. Um, technically, this film is out of this world. The movie opens, and I remember the first time I saw it, sitting in there in the IMAX theater, and uh there's these soldiers running through the streets and the gunshots start ringing out against them and it like it was like the opening of interstellar it bombed my eardrums Mm -hmm. technically this movie is insane it looks amazing oh my god it looks Mm -hmm. amazing the 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 i know i won't pull the quote up because i can't find it but there's a quote tarantino had about 
the scene when the main guy, I can't remember his name, but he's laying on the ground and the explosions are going. Closer yeah, to dude, that scene's insane. It's in the first like 20, 30 minutes. And he talks mm-hmm. about that. That's like his favorite explosion in film history. And it's amazing. And then you have like the scenes with Tom Hardy and his boys in the planes, and they're just amazing. It's like. I want to compare it to Top Gun Maverick as a experience, but it's not as epic. But it's it feels as real as those do, and mm-hmm. um, this this is a very human movie. Even though it's it, it talks, it goes over a lot of characters. This is a movie that's hard to judge because it spans a lot of characters and. You, since there's no like singular protagonist so to say i mean you could argue for one or the other you can also argue it's hard to invest in the characters because it it bounces around a lot it bounces from the the civilians to the the army to the to to tar party and the boys like Mm -hmm. it i i genuinely think dunkery is a hard film to talk about um but I think that even though this film is short, it is so short compared to Nolan's other movies. Yeah. I watched this with uh, the other last week um, when the credits hit, it was an hour and 39 minutes. And I was like, holy shit, this is like an hour shorter than Interstellar. And yeah, still it makes you, it, it somehow, even though gives a lot less time, to each character and there's so many characters it makes you care it really does and it's uh, i mean not to spoil later in the episode but trey watched 1917 and i really want to talk about the comparisons between these two movies because they're kind of it's it's tough to compare them but in my head it's like these are movies that focus on small amounts of people you know Mm mm-hmm yeah and i really find that dunkirk finds its ground in bouncing around yet making you care and trey was slandering harry styles but the scene when they're in the boat all hiding and the gunshots start coming through and the water starts pulling in harrowing such an intense scene i don't think any scene in this movie leaves you a moment to breathe even the scenes with Kenneth Branagh, who is amazing in this, like he's so so good. Yeah, he's still talking about how this is a catastrophic moment, and like, shit, we're lucky if some of us make it through. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I w- I want to let you talk so we can bounce each other off because I've got yeah more, or bounce off each other because I've got more to say, but I want to hear what you have to say because this was yeah. your first watch. Yeah, so this is the first Nolan movie since Following that yeah. I had not seen. Um, I just had never gotten around to it. Uh, I thought this was excellent. Um, I thought that, I mean, seeing Mark Rylance in anything is always a delight. I love Mark Rylance. Um, yeah. He's the goat. Uh, Tom Hardy's character, obviously that shot at the end is very famous where he's standing in front of the plane. I wanted to bring up the fire because, oh my God, it illuminates these scenes so well. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was really excellent. I thought the, the score, uh, I think this was, this was the first time Ludwig worked with Nolan. Um, I thought this was a Hans Zimmer score. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's a Hans Zimmer score. Oh, Hoyt Van Hoytema did the cinematography. No surprise yeah. there. Yeah, it's a Hans. It's a Hans Zimmer score. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I lied. Um, geez, Hans Zimmer has done some crazy scores. What a goat! Uh, yeah, I didn't even touch on the score. Yeah, the score was excellent. Um, of course, uh, and. Yeah, I just didn't like Harry Styles' character. I just don't like Harry Styles. I think he's annoying. Um, but... One thing, uh, sorry to cut you off. I'm really curious because, <clears throat> first off, uh, 
Hans Zimmer cooked in this movie, but I called you or you called me at, when you were watching this or after you'd finish it. And you were like, Did yeah, I? I'm kinda, you were like, I'm kind of leading between a four and a four and a half, and you ended up logging in a five. So I'm curious if it like as you sat with it more. Did okay. it grow on you? So here's what happened: is yeah. I was I had about 20 minutes left, and I had to go over to my grandparents to help them with some garden work. Yeah, you called and me. and I called you during that to talk about uh, a quiet between the storms from Dune Part Two, yes. which makes me physically levitate. Uh, so then I went back, and really that final 20 minutes where t- they all the boats show up and Tom Hardy comes back in and all of that. That's what kind of boosted it up to a five for me. Right. <clears throat> That's a W. Yeah. yeah. The third act of this movie is really, really great. Yeah. It's, it's such a hopeful film, even though the first like two acts are straight despair. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I was curious about asking you is, what do you think about Barry Keoghan's character and how they dealt with uh, spoilers for Dunkirk? I mean, if you're listening to it, you've probably seen it. Yeah. Um, if you're not, fast forward a few minutes because, yeah. With Barry Keoghan's death, because Killian Murphy accidentally kills him and it's very abrupt. And um, mm-hmm. it's, I, I think that his death is interesting, but then I think that the fact that the two of them lie to Killian because he's been so much and he's shell shocks and they're like, he'll be okay. And they lie that he's not dead for a while. Mm-hmm. It's really, really interesting. And I'm just curious what your thoughts are on about his death and the response to it. I mean, it's obvious Killian Murphy wasn't in his right state of mind. Yeah. Um, like he was obviously in flight mode. Like I just need to get, as far away from here as possible. Right. And they're saying to him, like, we're going back to Dunkirk. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's an accident. It was an accident. They got pushed. He fell down, hit his head. Shit happens, man. Um, (sighs) But I like the way they dealt with it. It felt, it didn't feel like they tried to push it under the rug or anything, or uh, I like the way Nolan dealt with it. Yeah. I really love how instead of, uh, Mark Rylance jumping on him. It's like it was an accident. He's still alive. He's in the basement. He's he's chilling. And it's just like this mission is the bigger situation and this is more important. And yeah. it's so interesting because Killian Murphy says you're just like a tugboat or whatever. You're a family boat. Mm-hmm. And yet that's what ends up saving a lot of these people. Yeah. And that's why Mark Rylance says what he does because he knows that he has a greater purpose and that mm-hmm. talking about Barry Kogan's death would only turn things, it, it would stop him from saving lives. Yeah. And I think that's such an interesting character. And again, I want to reiterate that even though this movie is really short compared to most Nolan movies, it has a really great way of developing character depth in a mm-hmm. short runtime, like you, yeah. you just, you just lock on so quick because the movie is so intense and it, it leaves you no room to breathe. Like the first scene of this movie is like, it's time. There's yeah. no, there's no downtime. You have, uh, the intro and then intenseness and then they get on the boat and then the boat gets attacked. And that scene alone is so intense. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. He, like, yeah, he he's on the deck and he opens the door and they're barely escaping and so many people die. Like N- Nolan manages to evoke so much emotion in under an hour forty five, which is yeah. insane. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that I really respect Dunkirk because it's not my favorite Nolan and it's not in my top five, but he manages manages to do so much with so little here. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to say so little because it's such an important story, but like, this is a minimalist movie. Like the cast is small. The main cast is small. It's not a big action packed movie. Um, Mm -hmm. 
there's there's no big plot twists or anything but he manages to evoke emotion in so many scenes and yeah i really respect it i i had this movie sitting pretty low was like seven or eight in my nolan ranking before yeah. i really watched it it's a and number nine for me yeah um i'll check in a sec but but it's really, still a five I, star yeah i really um, respected I just... it. it yeah um it, it, it's a I think it's a rewatchable film because mm-hmm. I mean number one it's visually stunning and the, we haven't I mean we talked about a little bit the dog fighting sequences are insane and like it, it's another moment of character development yet you're struggling with it you got the boys in the planes and like the only thing you're basing it off is you know what Tom Hardy sounds like because <laughs> he's got a big mask over his face and yeah in that moment it's like i don't care who this actor is or if i should care about them it's like i care if they survive like Mm -hmm. i i think he cuts those scenes into a great spot in the film where you're already invested in some of the characters so you're like oh i should care about these people when it comes in and it makes, like you said, it makes that ending even more impactful. And it's, yeah, I just, yeah. I respect this movie the more I think about it. I want to watch it again because I feel like I've just been neglecting it because I, mm-hmm. I want to buy it so I can uh, own it on Blu ray or 4K, whatever exists. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the more I talk about it now, the more I'm like, shit man maybe i need to raise it like yeah dunk dunkirk is a like outside of the story this is a master class in filmmaking Mm -hmm. and it it technically is it's astounding and uh one thing we haven't talked about is i mean you mentioned the 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 score of it but the ticking clock in a lot of these scenes Mm mm-hmm I find it raises that tension that you need because again, this is a short movie, but he wants you to feel tense. So, so many of these scenes have that ticking clock just in the background. And it's like, it's not loud, but it's enough for you to notice it. So you're like, Oh God. Yeah. And you're just on edge. Like you're just on edge for this entire film. I'm really, man. Yeah. <laughs> this this conversation. I raised it. I had it a four and a half before I rewatched it and I raised it to a five, but now I'm just like, man, it's not my favorite and I don't want to rewatch it as much because it's not as enjoyable a film, but mm-hmm. as a film, man, this is a, an exceptional film and it's an impressive film that exists yeah. and is, it, it, yeah, I'm just impressed. Yeah, I've been yapping I mean, a lot on which I don't. I want to hear what you think. About. I I feel the same way. This is an excellent film, um, especially the fact that I'm not usually the biggest fan of war films. Uh, I really enjoyed this one, um, and I'll talk about a little bit more why uh, once I get to talking about 1917. Um, yeah, I, but I, uh, I do really enjoy this. Um, I don't have anything else. I didn't have too many notes for this yeah, one. I'll just give uh, it. Do you want to? I'll give I, a really quick last bit, and then we'll yeah. move on to Oppenheimer. Yeah. Um, I I like war films. I think they're frequently engaging to the moment where it's like, oh, I want to watch an emotional film. A war film was going to get me emotional, and it it really changed for me. With I want you to watch the Thin Red Line really badly mm-hmm. um i don't know if you've seen any of terrence malick's films Mm-mm. the thin red line brings humanity to the forefront and i know it, it's like uh imagine that willem dafoe and the good part of charlie sheen is like an entire film because terrence malick is all about bringing the beauty of the earth to light yeah. while contrasting it with horrible shit mm-hmm. at least from what i've seen and the thin red line is such an interesting war movie where there's not a lot of combat there is a decent amount of combat but the first act of this movie is just soldiers looking at the beauty of the world and mm-hmm. i find that 
it's so engaging where you're like, man, the world's beautiful. And then you see people tearing each other apart, and it's so interesting. And I find that that movie has really changed my perspective on war movies as a whole. And it's maybe why I love Platoon so much and it, why I connected so much with uh, the human element of Platoon and why yeah. I have it over Film Metal Jacket. I it, 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 it really opened my eyes and I'm curious for if you watch it and when you watch it to see if it does the same thing for you. Cause yeah, it, war movies are pretty stereotypical. You kind of get the gist of what happens. Cause I mean, they're true stories most of the time. And it's like, mm -hmm. I, I know what this is going to happen. And it's like, there's going to be good and the bad and the good and the bad. And then it's going to end on a happy note. And yeah, the thin red line just really opened my eyes to taking in the aspect of humanity in a war film. So that's something I wanted to shout out because I know it's not related to Dunkirk in a direct way, but it's changed my perspective on war films in a big way. And yeah, I want to, whenever you watch it, I want to discuss it. Um, yeah, for sure. And all of his films in general, like I, I hope that at some point we get to do a terror. It's been to watch it. I haven't seen all of his movies, but yeah, he has a way of portraying not life, but, humanity and the human experience in such an interesting way so yeah yeah for sure i'm definitely looking forward to when yeah we do that um do you want to get into our next one let's let's talk about some peak bro oh my god um debatably best. one of the greatest movies ever made yeah. it's easily one of the best movies ever made not debatably <laughs> Uh, a lot of people no. are going to get mad at us for that. That's okay. Hell no. It is um, no introduction. Yeah, so 2023, Oppenheimer. You know what it's about. Uh, you know this because we've all seen it. It's yeah. peak. Uh, we should have brought on Jagger to kind of even out our glazing. Oh, hell no. The, just to, or just to bring him on to bully him, in, bully him into raising his score. Yeah. The first thing I really want to talk about before we dive into the nitty gritty of this film is our theater experiences with this film, because this is such a, uh, I'm struggling to find the words, but this movie locks you in, in a way where you just are so invested. And mm -hmm. I find that the theater, I, I know you've watched it at home. I've watched it at home, but the theater is just insane and i don't think watching it at home lessens the experience of the film no but, definitely not it's still a banger um i i saw the cinemax you saw the cinemax yeah it, it's so interesting because i i just kind of want to go i mean this oppenheimer conversation might be long but i kind of want to okay. go back to um christopher nolan is making a movie about robert j oppenheimer um and he had a really great marketing campaign. Do you remember those like billboards? They had like the countdown on them. And yeah. It was like July twenty first, twenty twenty three. Mm hmm. This movie's coming out, and you start getting hyped. And I, <sighs> more details start coming out about this. this is going to be a biographical film. It's a biopic. Mm -hmm. uh, and the cast starts leaking, and you're like, "Holy shit!" The cast is crazy and yeah hype starts building and building and building and the trailers come out and they are so insanely intense and you're like how is a biopic going to be this intense i love biopics i really do they're one of my favorite genres to throw on i find them very enjoyable mm -hmm. and i'm like oh my god this this is crazy and my hype just keeps building and building and building and I I buy my tickets for Oppenheimer with my brother who we don't see movies often together unless it's IMAX mm -hmm. because he lives close to the 70 millimeter IMAX theater and I live very far from it. So it's like, I'll pick yeah. him up and we'll go and it'll be like a hangout experience. Right. Yeah. And I was like, we're going, he's like, I got some buddies coming. I was like, hell yeah. We sit down and i 
shut out mental health. I get very anxious in big public situations. Um, yeah, me too, dude. I I have this thing where ever since the the shootings at the Dark Knight Rises yeah. opening in the states, I'm like, oh fuck, and I start like examining people that are coming in. Yeah, you're it's, like it's it's, it's it's you're like it's happening this time, dude. I've I've talked about with my therapist a lot, and it's like it's an issue that I I have a hard time with, and I mean the the seventy millimeter theater in my city is attached to a mall, so everyone had backpacks. Yeah, like, fuck, man. I'm like I'm so stressed. We sit down to watch this movie. I'm stressed as fuck. Yeah, I'm sure the and film did not help. No, but that's the thing. The first. 15 minutes of this movie start and I am locked in and me and my brother are having such a fun time experiencing mm-hmm. the story and I had zero anxiety once once the first like 15 minutes co- co- like cooked in and I'm like I'm not thinking about other people I am locked into this movie this movie yeah. hooks you in in a movie in a way that I cannot describe. It is a three-hour biopic that is sl- it's not slow, but some people might think it's slow. This is a dialogue-driven film. There's one big-ass bomb that detonates in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. It it should not be as successful as it is, but oh my freaking god, is this film phenomenal? It's yeah. one of the greatest achievements in filmmaking I've ever seen. And I'm going to rant for like another minute and then I'll toss it over to you. But yeah, we talked about it the other day. Like the can you hear the music scene and the opening and the seeing the effects on screen that Nolan did purely practical. I'm like, all right. I know that Nolan is out of his grounds here a bit from his basic his like his uh, formula of sci-fi movies and action movies. Like, I love Tenet, but this is not Tenet. Mm-hmm. And the moment I see that, I'm like, this is a Christopher Nolan movie, and I'm here. And it from there, I was like, boom! And yeah, I... I yeah, I, I really want to talk about the first watch first. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Trey. This can be a long conversation, but no, go ahead. This is—it's such a monumental film, and the first watch is so important for me. I—I I, I came out of this film just blown away, and I left the theater because I, I like again. I don't live near my brother, so we didn't talk about it a lot. And he was going to see Barbie like right after this, mm-hmm. and I saw it like I didn't. My girlfriend didn't come or anything, so I just drove home alone. I went on Spotify, I hit the Oppenheimer soundtrack, and I hit play, and I drove home. It's like a 35 minute drive, and I just, I was just in awe of what I just saw. It's a very similar feeling to what I had with Dune Part Two, but I'm curious to see about your experiences with your first watch. Uh, yeah. So I saw this day it came out, Barbenheimer yeah. Day. I still have the T-shirt I got from the Real Talk podcast. Um, okay. I had tickets to see Barbie at. Two o'clock, I went and saw that, went and got some dinner. Um, And then my brother-in-law, AJ, who was on our last episode, uh, met me at the theater, and we went and saw Oppenheimer. Um, So, and usually up to this point, I was, like, really into going to the theater. I usually went by myself. It's not weird if you go by yourself. It's actually more preferable. I love it. I love it. And so I wasn't used to, like pre-covid movie theater experiences yet right i i walk in and the movie starts and i realize there is not an empty seat in the entire theater also i don't know about you sorry i didn't there was no trailers before this movie for me oh there was a few yeah Yeah. we had none so we had a lot of people trailing. well you don't have to you don't know you don't have to brag (laughs) jesus fuck you um (laughs) No, and we walked out. I don't think we talked about the movie once on the drive home. Um, I logged it instantly. One of the easiest five stars. It started out at a 99 out of 100 for me. Um, And then two days later, I went and saw it again uh, with my parents and my little sister. 
Uh, we went to dinner after at California Pizza Chicken, which, by the way, California Pizza Chicken, so expensive and so not good. Oh, um, sure. Don't if you ever come to the states, Evan. Don't go to CPK. It's not good. Well, if I ever come to the states, I'm coming to see you. So I'm sure you'll take me to the good spots. <laughs> oh yeah, dude! All the good spots. I'm gonna ta- oh, I'm gonna yeah. take you to Dave's Hot Chicken. I'm gonna take you. Oh, also, if I come to Seattle, I want to go see the Bungie headquarters because uh, they're What's there. A... Oh yeah, dude! And I'll take you. I'll I'll come up and stay for the weekend, and I'll take you to uh, the Mopop, the Museum of Pop Culture. It was started yeah. by Paul Allen and um, oh, who I think it was Bill Gates. And they basically just had all this stuff and they made a museum. So there's like a Nirvana exhibit. There's a Jimi Hendrix right. exhibit, an entire floor dedicated to Pearl Jam. Oh, yeah. um, and there's like a fantasy room and, and sci-fi and horror. And they have like thousands of movie props. Oh, it's sick. Oh, yeah. Um, back to Oppenheimer, though. <laughs> I was gonna say really quick, not whenever, but whenever you not whenever, but like when you come to Calgary, I'll yes. take you to the mountains and we'll hang out in the mountains for the weekend. Be- By the way, I can't ski. I just want to make. I that can't clear. either. I can't either. My my ex, for- my ex. I went on a screen trip with her and her dad. And they, I was like, I know how to longboard and I've been skateboarding for a long time. So I, maybe I should do snowboarding while you guys ski. And, uh, because I was like, it's similar. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar. So I'd probably pick it up faster. And they were like, no, you're going to ski. I didn't do it. <laughs> Zero bunny hills. They just have me get on the lift. It was my first time ever. And we walk up the mountain or we get up to the top of the mountain, and I'm, I look down the hill, and I'm like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm going to die. Um, but yeah, second watch, walked out of the theater. We went to dinner. Uh, I didn't say a single word at dinner. I just sat staring at the wall, just like yeah. in awe. Third watch, about a week later, I finally saw it in IMAX. And I wow. swear to you, I thought I was in the theater for 45 minutes. A movie has never gone by faster. Um, this is a masterful, masterful piece of cinema. As I've said before, uh, this movie has everything that Nolan does well amplified to 11. It's he. It's everything that Nolan is known for, just like times four. Um, I mean, the spectacle, the score, the visuals, um, the stacked cast, everything, just like... To the max. Um, I think this is an excellently paced film. I think we get an all-time performance from Cillian Murphy. Um, Killian. And Killian? What did I say? Cillian. Oh, mother. Sorry. Sorry, my boy. Killian. Um, I think we get a... I mean, we get so many good performances in, uh, in this. David Crumholtz is a delight, as always. Love David Dude. Crumholtz. Shout um, out to 10 Things I Hate About You because he was a goat in that and he's a goat in this. Yeah, the only good character in 10 Things I Hate Stop. About You. Um, Shout out to Dane DeHaan, a menace in this. Yeah, Dane dude, DeHaan. Casey Affleck jump scare. Um, yeah. A Gary Oldman jump scare. Dude, Don't bring dude. that crybaby back into my office. Dude, um, it's so crazy because there's those... Casey Affleck and Gary Oldman are not marketed in this movie. And you, yeah, I was sitting with my brother, and Casey Affleck started talking. We look at each other, we're like, I know that voice, and we couldn't place it. And then Casey Affleck pops on screen, and we're like, Holy shit, that's Casey Affleck! And then the the Gary Oldman scene, we were blown away. We were like, What? Oh my god. Yeah, get, uh, President Truman basically telling Oppenheimer to suck it up and stop feeling like, sorry for this himself. This isn't your bomb. It's my bomb. I dropped it. Stop being a pussy. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy his, scene. His, he's feeling so much remorse, and uh, he's just so conflicted. And Truman's like, yeah, don't be a bitch. Like, this is... He's like, if you're worried this is attached to you, it's not. It's attached to me. And that's crazy, because it it's a moment of neglect for Oppenheimer that it's like all of his work isn't attributed to him but it's also like what did I just do I just killed so many people it's so so interesting that scene Mm -hmm. yeah I mean visually this movie is insane Um, 
we we can't forget Robert Downey Jr. And I mean, oh, we what a performance! It, we talked about it on Tuesday, which that episode's out, right? Uh, yes, our Oscar or wait, which episode? The Oscar one, yeah. Oh yeah, that was on Wednesday, and oh, Wednesday, yeah, our Oscar predictions are up on our YouTube channel and on yeah. uh, Spotify or wherever you listen. Rob, Robert Downey Jr. is a masterclass in this film. Like this mm-hmm. is. I think I read earlier it's 31 years since his last Oscar nomination for Chaplin. Yeah. That that's crazy. He is astounding in this film. He he brings a level of like <laughs> naivety but also superiority to every single scene mm-hmm. where oh my god, like it, they they and they introduce it so early with him and he and uh he's like here's your office, uh Oppenheimer. Or Robert, and he goes, "Oh, there's uh, there's Albert Einstein. I'll introduce you." And <laughs> Oppenheimer like, goes, yeah. "No need. I've known him for years." He's like, "We're longtime friends." Yeah. The best is first- when it, the best is when uh, Oppenheimer goes, "I'll consider it," and he goes, "This is the best physics department in the entire country," and he goes, "That's why I'm considering it." Yeah. Just, oh, I love, dude! I, lo- I love that one scene where he's in the trial, and it's like I thought that uh, I I can't remember what call of a university it is, but he's like, uh, oh, Princeton. He's like, I thought Princeton had the best uh, astrophysics department. He's like, it, uh, it wasn't until I invented it. Like that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, and um, I I really want to talk about this first act, and we'll, I I want to break this down. Um, mm-hmm. Like the movie starts, and you get him as this lonely, scared student who clearly is curious about the universe, and you get that through the can hear the music, and like that scene is just it's dropped by like it's followed by so many shots of the universe and atoms and all this shit and you can clearly tell that robert's mind is racing a million miles a minute about what the universe is and all these secrets he can lock and mm-hmm. it's jumped into when he's at the the university with uh shit can't remember uh the actor's name but I love the scene where he's with he he opens the class and the one student walks in and the student's like oh I thought I was here for this and he's like oh you are you're the only student yeah and they they immediately start going one to one and it's like and then immediately cuts to this huge ass class and it's like Oppenheimer is there to learn and challenge his students and he he just wants to fuel these minds to to experience what he is so that they can learn and yeah. discover more and more because he's not like obsessed with being number one he's obsessed with just discovering and discovering and discovering like mm-hmm. that's that's all he wants he just wants to know and it's so killian brings it forward masterfully like he he portrays this role so intricately in a way where you feel every emotion that Oppenheimer is. Yeah. I can't get over it. It's it's just masterful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to pull out a uh, Jurassic Park quote that I think sums up the, this movie pretty well. It's when Jeff Goldblum is talking to uh, Richard Attenborough. And, uh, right, I have the right Attenborough. He was at yep. Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, and he says, your scientists are so obsessed with if they could, they never asked if they should. Hmm. And I feel like that's the perfect line. Yeah. To sum up this movie. I because, love it. That's one of my favorite movie lines. Yeah. And I think that's really emblematic here where it's like Oppenheimer is so fueled on <clears throat> learning. And I love the scene. I'll, I'll get back to the if they should in a sec, but where he's just chilling and you see the scientists sprinting down the street and they're like they split the atom and yeah his mind starts racing and he's like you can't do that and he starts doing the math on his board and they walk in they're like they're doing it in the room beside you and Mm -hmm. from there he kind of just races about everything and he knows about the bomb and uh, yeah 
there's that one scientist i think it's like alex wolf or something and it's like you know what this means right and he's like i don't the the one scientist like i don't and he goes a bomb and it's like he he doesn't think about the bomb right away he thinks about the science and it's like because he knows immediately how impactful and devastating a bomb would be mm-hmm. that he 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 kind of like gaslights himself almost into just focusing on the science because that's what he's good at and what he cares about yeah and it's he's such an interesting character where he cares so much about everything in life and Mm -hmm. cares about his family cares about his kid and he cares about his kid so much that he gives him up to his best friend because he's like i'm so busy and focused on this that i can't take care of my kid it's fascinating Um, yeah and shout out Jake. to that guy shout out to that friend who uh, gets murdered in the first like 20 minutes of the oh, yeah. first david gordon green halloween movie yeah um like kelly and murphy brings the emotion that you feel so deeply in every single scene like you feel this it's not kelly and murphy it's robert j oppenheimer living his life and mm-hmm. being in this moral distress for three hours straight like he's fascinated and excited and then it's depression and conflict and the stuff with uh gene tadlock is yeah. so conflicting like he the the scene after gene dies is one of the best acted scenes in the film where he is in this state of just pure distress and he's shaking and he's like it's my fault because i was pushing this so hard and it's and the 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 whole communism subplot is really dude i'm i could go on for hours like the communism dude, feel subplot, free I, i'm enjoying taking a back seat yeah, this episode the, the communism subplot is so interesting too because oppenheimer doesn't give a fuck about the cold war and he doesn't care about like i mean the cold war hadn't happened but like he doesn't care about like what's going on here uh, maybe the Cold War happened. I don't know the timeline, but he, Cold War was basically from the end of 1952 right, yeah, or the so, end of World War II to like yeah, the mid 80s. So, yeah, so he, I, I studied in university. I forget it, but um, he, he, he's not con- concerned with that. He's concerned with the world, and it's so so interesting to see him grapple with trying to spread information and discoveries with like this whole stay away from any russian and russian partners or russian associates and the whole gene tatlock thing it's it's so so interesting yeah um and you kind of push into the second act where matt damon shows up who is astounding in this movie i would have loved to see a supporting actor nomination for matt damon he's awesome in this movie he's very good yeah he brings a great level of humor to this movie too which i think this movie does have a decent level of humor but um yeah once (laughs) there's that great scene where it's like i don't know the exact quote but um sorry uh matt damon's talking to him for the first time and he's like oh i did this and this and it's like oh i bet you got a bunch of recommendations about me and he's like oh no i didn't everyone says you're an asshole and a narcissist yeah yeah that's a good scene yeah um sorry Trey, i gotta pee again <laughs> if you no, it's all about, good uh, yeah um well evan Go goes back. to the bathroom i'm gonna talk about some parts i enjoy about this film um this is paced unbelievably we see yet again here that uh nolan uses uh his score to pace his films um he makes everything feel like it's the most important scene in the movie um really with his score he he really really paces his films well um we get some great performances here some great performances that only have two or three scenes like alden ehrenreich and uh uh alex wolf and um devin bostick and josh hartnett is excellent in this benny safty is excellent in this i mean just so many excellent performances emily blunt is absolutely amazing i don't think she'll win the oscar but i do think she is very good um 
yeah, there's just a lot of great performances in this film, and there is, I mean, there, there, there's so much to enjoy. This is one that does require multiple watches, though. Um, most people will not get it on the first time, um, just because there's so much to digest and so much that goes on. Um, and another thing, I don't usually like biopics. I usually have them rated pretty low. Um... There's a few that I do enjoy. I really like James Mangold's uh, Walk the Line about Johnny Cash. I really like that film. Um, but as far as biopics go, I don't really have too many that I enjoy. Um, but this one did surprise me. Um, I mean, maybe it's the fact that I love Nolan and anything really he does, I'm in, besides Inception. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy this film. It was my number one of last year. Um, And I don't think... Holdovers was the only thing close to even touching this. Um, But yeah, this film is excellent. Um, Evan will probably give more of his thoughts when he gets back. Um, Yeah, I can't wait to see what Nolan does next. I think it'll be a while before he does anything. I could see this being like his magnus opus um like his final piece of work i think that would be excellent if this was his final piece of work i think this is an amazing piece to end on i feel like this is a culmination of everything nolan has done in his career um kind of all rolled up into one um but yeah those are my thoughts evan do you want to give any last thoughts what were you just chatting about sorry my general thoughts of the film. I don't okay. know. My notes. Um, yeah. Great performances. Great score. Um, yeah. I yeah. want to touch on, because we talked about it with AJ yesterday. I want to talk about this third act, because mm-hmm. this film arguably climaxes in the second act. And yeah. there's another hour after that. And mm-hmm. it kind of um, assumes, not assumes, but... Again, this movie was a heart. It, it didn't really give you expectations besides that you like Christopher Nolan and are interested in Oppenheimer. But yeah, <clears throat> again, the Trinity test scene is one of the greatest scenes of all time. This is a 20 minute sequence. And I'm sorry if Trey's already talked about this, but um, no, I haven't. I was going to let you tackle yeah. that. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. I, no, I, because you're like on a roll here and you're yeah. killing it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. This. This whole... I'm going to do the second act really quick. Um, It's a really interesting act because Oppenheimer kind of gets this momentum where he's like, shit, I'm unstoppable. Like, people believe me. And yeah, I love the scene between him and David Krumholtz where uh, he's like, I need you to help me. And David Krumholtz is like, I'm not going to help you. Like, I don't feel right about dropping a bomb on all these innocent people and Mm -hmm. all this and Oppenheimer's kind of like I just purely want you on research and all this and uh, David I'm sorry I forget his name but David's like Kromholt? No no, his like character's name. Oh Robbie Oh Robbie he's like uh, take that stupid uniform off you're not a soldier you're a scientist I love that scene because Oppenheimer's kind of in this uh this mode where he's like shit i'm i'm into it like the military's recruited me and i'm there and i think it's kind of this awakening for him where he's feeling a bit more compassionate to the science behind it and he's like oh once a week and he does the same thing with benny softy where he's like because benny softy tries to walk out of the camp and he's like once a week i'll yeah. meet with you and we'll chat pure science because he laughs at the the hydrogen bomb idea <clears throat> And mm-hmm. I love those scenes because it kind of reverts to his compassionate nature because he's a very compassionate person in this film, but mm-hmm. he kind of gets carried away very easily. And um, that second act really is a, a a battle between the two of those personalities he has until uh, <laughs> the the Trinity test. And oh my god, what a scene! I thought I was going to have a heart attack during that sequence. Yeah, it it is heart stopping. It it starts the 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 weather is shit, so you're already like, oh my god, there's a storm. Like, 
there's that scene right before the Trinity test where he climbs the tower to look at the bomb, and it's like, oh my god, like this is real, like this is about to happen, and it was really cool seeing it on opening day before any like, because this was plastered over TikTok like the day after mm-hmm. it came out, yeah, not really knowing where the trajectory of this movie was going to go, and um. This this sequence it's like twenty minutes long and it the the score like if you look at the score of the song the Trinity song it's like nine or ten minutes long and it's mm-hmm. I've listened to it so many times because it starts very subtly and builds and builds and builds and it's so emblematic of that scene where it's like all right it's time and yeah it just gets more and more intense and before that I love the scene when they're waiting at the weather between him and Matt Damon where Matt Damon drops the almost zero mm-hmm. or near zero and it's like oh the chances are near zero oh it's such a great scene yeah. again matt damon providing great comic relief mm-hmm. in a very dark movie and um yeah the trinity test is j- it's magnificent it's one of the best scenes in film ever the yeah the build up to it is out of this world every character is shown kind of uh experiencing it every character you've seen so far um and their reactions to kind of what's about to happen and Mm -hmm. my favorite is uh shit uh dennis or uh jack quaid jack quaid's character when he's sitting in the car and he's like oh i don't need this i don't need that and he's kind of just like very casual to the whole thing and he's sitting beside benny's after he's got sunscreen over his entire face and all this and Benny Safty is like, is it rubbed in? And Jack yeah. Ray goes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And his whole face is pale white. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this 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 lead up is insane. And I we we have to talk about the bomb drop. Like this bomb mm-hmm. drops, you see the explosion, and it cuts to a black screen with explosions in the background. And Killian drops the "Now I am become death, destroyer of worlds" in a haunting manner. And a split second later, because I, I mean, everyone's like, shit, what's the explosion scene going to be like? What's the explosion scene going to be like? Yeah. Uh, the, the the sound of the explosion scared the shit out of me. I was not ready for it, dude. Oh, yeah. my God. Well, people forget that sound, uh, light travels faster than sound. Yeah. It, um it so pulls. you see it and you don't hear it for a few seconds and they really make you wait in the movie oh my god it's like 20 30 seconds before you hear the explosion yeah and when you finally hear it in imax oh my god it's shakes deafening. The entire theater. it's deafening and it's so crazy because when you're sitting there it's silent you're just watching these beautiful visuals on screen and you're like, Oh my God. I mean, my first thought was how the hell did Christopher Nolan do this? And then I kind of like disconnected from that. And I was like, wow, this is astounding to look at. And then it's like, (laughs) and (laughs) yeah. And during the silence, all you hear in the background is Killian Murphy going. (sighs) Yeah. Oh yeah. And you're just like, what the hell? It's, it's one of my favorite scenes of all time. I'm, dumbfounded at how well Christopher Nolan handled the explosion Mm -hmm. and after that is the third act which is a insane courtroom drama packed with powerhouse performances we need to talk about Emily Blunt's big scene yeah and AJ's right all she does is correct his grammar but for some reason you're like oh shit get roasted bruh yeah because like Killian Murphy is kind of a pushover in these scenes. He answers the questions yes, no. He never really pushes pushes at all. And mm-hmm. I mean, we're this is a dense ass movie. We're not talking about Emily Blunt's alcoholism or anything of that like that. And that's that's something we could get into too. Um, but mm-hmm. the the scene where she comes in and she gets the t- the deposed is fucking insane she shows this guy up like it's nobody's business yeah and shout out jason clark for maybe giving one of the best performances in this movie he's he's phenomenal in this movie yeah well i mean he's always amazing i love him in zero dark 30 so much Um, yeah 
But, and then you get, again, another Emily Blunt scene where <laughs> they go to shake her hand, and she's like... So, oh yeah, where she t- uh, stares down Teller. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and they like hold their hands out to shake her hand. And she's like, "Go fuck yourself." Because there's that line. I don't remember who's. I think it's Albert Einstein who says it uh, to him, where he's he's like, "They'll throw a party in your name down the line, and they'll celebrate you, but it'll be them celebrating themselves." mm Hmm. And it, that that scene is like bit for bit exactly what Albert Einstein says. It's crazy, and yeah, I think they did the aging really well on all those characters where they look the right age. That's a small thing to compliment, but I do think that scene is really well look. It looks great. But yeah. The last thing before we move on is I want to talk about Alden Einrich and and Rami Malek decimating Robert Downey Jr. Because yeah. Rami Malek shows up in this movie about halfway through, not even. He doesn't utter a single word. He, he's mm-hmm. just there as a scientist, and you're like, that's it? And then he pops up in the third act with like half an hour to go and drops the fucking bombshell that takes Robert Downey Jr. down, and it's intercut with Alden Einrich just like kind of piecing him out piece by piece and bringing him down. It's so good. He's um Alvin Einrich is amazing in this movie. I think it's Aaron Reich. Oh yeah, maybe you're right. Um, but I haven't seen Solo, so I don't know if he's good in that. But he, oh my god, he's so good in this. Yeah, and him, him, and Rami Malek create two of the best scenes in this third act. And like, I mean. It's curious that AJ was saying he loves Anatomy of Fall and courtroom dramas, but he doesn't love the third act of Oppenheimer when it's a riveting courtroom drama. And I just can't get over how they managed to keep the same level of tension through the last hour of the movie. Agreed. Even a- after the bomb drops, because you think, oh my god, that's the climax, but then it's like, this movie does not stop. It just keeps going, and it keeps you so tense for the last hour. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And then you get this final scene, which is heartbreaking, and so... It's like existential crisis-inducing, mm-hmm. where you finally find out what him and Oppen- what, what him and uh, Albert Einstein were talking about, and it's like, Jesus Christ the world's gonna end and the film ends with the shot of Killian looking out at the lake and it's harrowing and then the shot of all of the rockets going up and it's oh my god it's just so it's such a harrowing ending where it makes you feel so dreadful it's it's a masterful movie I might have to raise it, oh, dude. This to- the, my top three of twenty twenty three is so conflicted because Oppenheimer is a masterful movie, but Poor Things is a movie I love the yeah. most. And dude, I just I just I, saw your most recent review. Now I am become peak destroyer of Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think I watched it right after that. Oh, that's yeah, really I, funny. I I. I, I am having such a hard time placing my top three. Like, they're interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Oppenheimer, I've been yapping. Thank you, Trey, for letting me go off. Cause... Dude, of course. I'm I'm actually kind of tired today, so... Yeah. Uh, I have so much to say about this movie. I think really it's Christopher out. Nolan's magnum opus. It's so weird because you, you say Nolan's magnum opus, and yet mm-hmm. it's so different from all of his other movies. Mm -hmm. it's not a sci-fi it's not an action movie yet it's the culmination of every moment that he's done before his cinema like that i mean hoi van hatema is amazing ludwig cooks maybe one of the greatest scores of all time yeah the the pacing is out of this world it it's just a flawless film it's a really flawless yeah i want to share two of my favorite reviews i just saw this one uh, Oppenheimer's Girl Dinner, a metric ton of cigarettes and a total of two clementine slices. Um, and then, shout out Cam Walsh, uh, genuinely one of the uh, funniest people in the film uh, com- like community. Um, 
his first review of this is just, uh, I'm op and hard. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah, so that's our Nolan deep dive. Um, a director who has had a massive amount of influence and success in the uh, 21st century. Um, he will obviously go down as one of the goats. Um, whether yeah. you like him or not, he has achieved so much technically as a filmmaker. And we had a blast diving oh, deep it. into his filmography uh with you guys so you thank get, you for joining us should we yeah, reveal bef- yeah do you want to do our lists before we uh i mean we've kind of uh done oh our ranked list. lists i would yeah i'd love to go through yeah yeah let me just n- rattle mine off right now yeah, i don't, don't want to spend too them. much yeah. time on them because we've already reviewed all these so 12 films um so for Dunkirk lands. starting at are all of them in here? He only has 12, right? Yeah, 12. Okay. Starting at the bottom, number 12, Inception. Fuck. Number 11, Insomnia. Number 10, Following. Number 9, Dunkirk. And this is where, from here on out, they are all five stars, so it is very difficult to rank them. Um, number 8, Tenant. Number 7, The Prestige. Number wow. 6, The Dark Knight. Number five, Interstellar. Number four, Memento. Number three, Batman Begins. Number two, The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, man, I want to watch that again. <laughs> Number one, Oppenheimer. Okay. Give us yours. Rattle yeah, off. our lists are very different. Okay, so uh, my 12th is following. My 11th is Insomnia. They're interchangeable, and I think Robert Williams' performance in Insomnia pushes it up here. Mm-hmm. It's it's peak um my 10 through one are five stars i think my f- 10 through six are pretty interchangeable yeah ish and number 10 i have dunkirk and number nine batman begins number eight dark knight rises number seven memento number six the prestige memento then, is too low yeah it's i know too low I know, but I just Bring love the up. prestige so much. I, I, dude, he's a hard director to rank because I love all his movies I know. so much. I know, it's um, difficult. <laughs> number five, Tenet. Tenet is probably going to sit at a five or a four between Tenet and Inception. Both of mm-hmm. them are absolute god tier for me. I love them both. Tenet yeah. is one of the most fun movies I've ever seen. For me, number four, number four, Inception. Number three, Interstellar. Number two, Dark Knight. Number one, Oppenheimer. That three through one it's not changing. Um, yeah. Christopher Nolan is a masterful, masterful filmmaker. Um, we're about to get into the what we've been watching, and I want to talk about Denis Villeneuve. And um, did you watch Dune two again? No, I. But just watching Arrival. Um, oh yeah, you watched Arrival again. Peak yeah. cinema. Peak cinema. I watched, I watched Arrival right last night, and it was like, is Denis better than Nolan? And it was just like. It's, Ooh, it's, it's, it's he a might hard, be. I know. I, I want to do a full <laughs> watch through. I need to rewatch Blade Runner 2049. Before Have you I seen Enemy? I've seen all of his movies. What are your thoughts on Enemy? Do you like Enemy? I oh, like, yeah. You don't like spiders. Yeah. So, so I like Enemy, but I fucking hate spiders. So I have it at a four star. I probably won't watch it again. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But ooh, he might be better than Nolan. Um. Oh, is Beth there? Tell Beth hi for me. Well, well, Evan's talking to his girlfriend. Um, I'm gonna reveal um, who our next director and ed- director deep dive is. So I'm closing the votes right now. Um, we have our next director for the director deep dive. Um, and what, any new votes? Uh, yeah, three. Um, so coming in at, oh, is Beth here? Say, tell her hi for me. Trey says hi. Uh, so coming in at fourth place with one vote is Denis Villeneuve. Wow. Um, not, not too much representation for our boy out there. He is also tied with, uh, Peel Aster Eggers, John Carpenter, and David Lynch. Now, tied for second 
with two votes is James Cameron and M. Night Shyamalan. And coming in at number one with four votes. Come on, guys. We need to get active on these votes and on these Dude, polls. Your last one was so much more active. What is going on? Well, yeah, that's because I limited it to <laughs> one response per person. And <laughs> Al- Alan and Isaac were just in there spamming votes. Yeah. Um, and coming in at first place, the next director in our director deep dive series, Paul Thomas Anderson. Wow. Trey. With four votes. Like AJ um, said, you need to... I know. I know. Um, so this will be a good time. Um, Tuesday... We are doing Seventh Seal and Room. Uh, I have to watch a Bergman, which I'm looking forward to, man. I'll, I'll watch um, it with you if you want. I don't or know. We can talk because uh, I I find sorry. I'm, oh my god, you just got a straight view of the devil chin. <laughs> just, <laughs> just put up Paul Thomas Anderson in a letterbox. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I, I think that Bergman is a director where discussing his films afterwards benefits them greatly. So I'm excited to talk about uh, Seven Seal because for me, it's it's my least favorite. And I've seen 10 of his movies. This is my bottom Bergman. Yeah. It, it could go hand in hand with The Virgin Spring because The Virgin Spring is a rape revenge movie. And a rape revenge movie from the 60s, it's not, it's not a pleasant movie. Um, but yeah uh, i'm sure the seventh seal is uh it's interesting it has one of the coolest plots it's about a guy who plays uh chess with death to stay alive it's fucking mm-hmm. sick yeah that's awesome but, but it's not um, my favorite i'm excited to talk, chat about it um yeah and- so tuesday we'll be doing that um friday will be our first episode in our pta uh have you seen uh room yeah i have okay cool yeah have you yeah not not for a while though yeah i'm gonna rewatch it um i always rewatch stuff before the pod i like it being fresh in my yeah. mind um so next friday uh first episode of our pta um watch through where you're going to be reviewing hard eight which will be a first watch for me and what I believe okay, to be his that. best film, Boogie Nights. I haven't seen Boogie Nights, even though PTA is... You haven't seen Boogie Nights? No, and I got oh. it in the last week. I actually got it in the Real Talk raffle, so I need Oh, to you should it. wait. You should wait, and we'll watch it together. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, dude, it's fucking peak, bro. I, oh. dude, the only scene I've seen from Boogie Nights is the scene where William H. Macy does that thing. Oh, where he, yeah, uh, we don't need to say it. We'll talk about it on the episode. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's the best line in the movie um um, i'm really excited for boogie nights magnolia is me is in my top 10 of all time excellent film yeah Uh, so still haven't seen punch rug love i'm really excited to watch that yeah advice i love master i love there will be blood is a flawless film i can't Mm -hmm. i'm really really excited to to do an episode on licorice pizza also we don't review director shorts. I'm going to make you, Trey, review, or not review, watch the Radiohead Tom York short film. It's on Netflix. It's Sounds 15 good. minutes long. It's called Anima. It's directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. Are you sure it's, it's not Enema? Anima. With an A. Anima? <laughs> oh, that's a little sus, PTA. Come on, Anima? Man. Come on, dude. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'll um, probably be name dropping Radiohead a few times through the Paul Thomas Anderson. That's a W, man. Because he directs all their music videos. But yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson should be fun. I really love him. And I've got some blind spots in his filmography. So I'm really excited. Yeah. So next Friday will be Hard Eight and uh, Boogie, Nights. Boogie Nights. Thank you. Um, and then after Seventh Seal and Room, we will be reviewing. What? Okay, what are we doing? Oh, here it is. Oh, peak episode. We're reviewing Jaws and How to Train Your Dragon. Oh. I've never seen Jaws. It's pretty good. I just hate Richard Dreyfuss, so I don't like <laughs> it that much, but uh, I, God, I saw he's How worse. to Train Your Dragon in theaters. I haven't seen it since then, so I'm excited peak to rewatch Peak animation, that. dude. John Powell cooked on that score. That um, Flight Test is a banger. Um, and then the Friday after that, 
we will be doing uh Magnolia and punch drunk love which is yeah wow what a crazy episode i'm so excited to talk about magnolia bro and i've never seen punch drunk love so i'm really hyped for that we're gonna glaze both hardcore i hope so. um i hope you like magnolia or you've seen magnolia yes i have oh, okay Are it's you? excellent Dude, it's one I, of my dad's I, faves i'm gonna try and gas on my girlfriend into watching it even though it's three hours long <laughs> it's just tell her she can like color her during it she can do whatever um There's not a lot going on on screen it's just a talking movie <laughs> exactly uh yeah so that's what we'll be doing in the future please yeah. uh join us for those episodes um thank you for joining us on our episodes Wait, sorry, these weeks we gotta no. do what we've been watching. Yes, I'm just giving like oh, I sorry. always do this. God. I'm sorry. Yeah, you ruined my rhythm. Um sorry. <laughs> join us. Uh yeah, join us. God damn it. You sorry. ruined my rhythm, Evan. Um whatever. You know, you know <laughs> You know the vibes. True. Um all right. Evan, how many do you have? Five. What day are you going back to? Fifth, when we watch Poor Things. Poor Things. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to go back to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten, ten, yeah, I'm, eleven, I'm, twelve, thirteen, oh fourteen. Okay. okay. So I'll do one, you do two. <laughs> no, I got to do like three, bro. Yeah, three. Okay. Um, but I. Have you settled on a rating for poor things yet? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. Okay. I genuinely don't know. I'm sitting it's either gonna be like a four and a half or like a star and a half. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about poor things. I've talked about it before. This is um I mean Oppenheimer has kind of really thrown a, a wrench in my wheels, but Poor Things is my favorite movie of the year. You know me, hopefully you know I adore Yogurt Lanthimos. This is maybe my favorite coming of age movie of all time. It's fucking weird. It's horny and inventive and beautiful to look at and mm -hmm. funny and depressing. It has it hits every beat. Every emotional moment hits, every funny moment hits for me. It's stunning to look at. I I love the use of black and white to color. Every performance is goaded. Willem Dafoe, Mark Ruffalo, Rami Youssef, Emma Stone. Oh my god. And I mean, I want more... The only fault I have with this movie is I want more Margot Qualley because I adore her. But mm -hmm. I, I won't yap about it more because I've already yapped about it enough. Poor Things is spectacular. I've seen it five times now, I think. I think this is my fifth watch. Yeah. Uh, it, it's perfect. I adore it. Um, you can talk about it if you want, or you can save it till you settle on a rating for next week. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. Cool. Give um, me, give, me give me three. Yeah. So I'm gonna bust out these three as kind of one. Yeah. Um, they're some Oscar shorts I checked out. Right. Um, and I'm gonna do this before I get to my feature length films. Shit, I gotta watch those tomorrow. Uh, I checked out the ABCs of book banning. This is what I believe is going to win best documentary short. Um, it's about banned books in America. Sounds um, interesting. yeah, I watched the Barber of Little Rock, which was really interesting about it kind of explores the racial wealth gap in America. Um, and it's about this guy who basically started his own trust, um, in, a, in Little Rock, Arkansas, for people who need really small loans that banks won't give them. Um, and they need like emergency loans. <coughs> like I need rent like now, That's, or these I are just documentaries, got out of prison. Right? Yeah. That That's one's sick. like 35 minutes. You can find, I watched that one on YouTube. The ABC's a book banning is on Paramount. Um, nice. and then Island in between. I watched this on YouTube as well. It's basically, uh, the rural Taiwanese outer islands of Kinmen sit merely two miles off the coast of China. Kinmen attracts tourists for its remains from the 1949 Chinese Civil War. It also marks the front line of, for Taiwan and its escalating tension with China. Uh, really interesting. Nice. Um, yeah. Give us your next one. Yeah, my next one was Nyad. Um, I like this a lot. It's a very by the books biopic, and my mm -hmm. next one is Rustin. I'll talk about it more after. But um, 
these two Oscar nominated films, they're by the books. They've got amazing performances. I love Annette, Annette Benning and Jodie Foster in this. Yeah. It's and Reese very, Fonz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's great. Um, a very inspirational story. Um, I think it's shot well. I don't think it's. I mean, I'm glad it didn't get nominated for Best Picture. I'll say that. But um, I'm kind of conflicted. I wanted to see Greta Lee. I think Greta Lee was way better than Annette Benning in this, but whatever she's annette benning's been nominated for so many oscars that this feels like a career achievement nomination um Mm. but i still like the movie a lot um and i'm not mad i watched it i've seen mutuals give this i saw ryan today locked rustin at a star and a half which that's crazy it's crazy i'll talk about it more after this but yeah i like Nyad. it was good and i'm glad i watched it it was an enjoyable biopic inspirational enjoyable it had some funny moments some intense moments yeah it was good yeah um so next i watched uh, a horror movie called the possession is i've been watching from, a lot of horror movies recently is this, is this from like the 2010s 2012 yeah with yeah, jeffrey okay, dean so, morgan and Kyra yeah. cedric so i've seen the poster for this because it's like the fucking girl with the sorry oh, i've been swearing a lot this episode i'm sorry it's like <laughs> the girl with the, the hand coming of her mouth over her face i've been yeah. wanting to watch this movie for a while so how was it I, it was okay um it had cool moments but <clears throat> it was pretty pretty underwhelming was it um, is it worth a watch sure yeah <laughs> okay I mean, if you're just like playing like Escape some... from, if you're playing like Escape from Tarkov or video games or something, right. and you just want to throw on a free log and an easy to watch horror movie with some solid scares. Yeah, I was um, gonna say, does it have some decent scares? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Um, we love. And Jeff then I watch. Morgan. Yeah, he's great. And then I watch Kill List, which I saw you have seen. Yes. Um, it's slow burn. You are correct, as you said in your review. Uh, this was not what I was expecting it to be, but I did very much enjoy it. Uh, Crazy ending. <laughs> yeah, truly. Uh, yeah, that was a solid one. And then, now that I... Since I was finished with grinding out the Oscars movies, which was a pain in my butt, um, I decided I'm going to finish the Halloween trilogy. Ugh. So, I checked off uh, Halloween H2O 20 years later, starring What's Josh... Up, LL Cool J, Josh Hartnett is in this, Adam Arkin, Jamie Lee Josh Curtis. Josh Hartnett is the dude from Oppenheimer we were talking about. Yeah, Michelle I Williams. I didn't even realize that was Michelle Williams. Oh, that's crazy. Um, The kid from Jumanji is in it. LL Cool J is in it. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in it. Um, Crazy cast. Uh, yeah. What a blast. It was so awful, but it was so fun. Um, I had a blast with this one. Probably the one I've had the most fun with since the second one. Um, yeah, I I find that H two O like <laughs> we're gonna talk about Resurrections in a second, but oh yeah, okay, baby. So Resurrections is a bad movie, but it's really fun. H two O is not a bad movie, but it's decently fun. I mm-hmm. have uh H two O at a three star, I think three or three and a half. Yeah, I have it at um, a four. Yeah, that's fair. I don't yeah. think it's a bad movie in no. like because it's coming off Halloween Six, which is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire which life. Which one was Halloween Six? The it, the one you also gave half a star. It's terrible. Oh man, is that the one where Michael has like sex with his niece? Yeah, the Curse of Michael Myers. So oh terrible. god, that was so it's awful. It's terrible. Um, yeah. So I don't think this is a terrible movie or bad or anything, but it's not great. Mm-hmm. But it's fun. It's fun enough. And LL Cool J is in it. Yeah, and he's he's sick as hell. Yeah, he starts uh, reading all the uh, sexy books to his wife, and <laughs> yeah, it's dude, that's absolutely so hysterical. All right, give us your next one. Yeah, my next one, like I said, is Rustin. I really enjoyed Rustin. Um, yeah, I gave it three and a half. Uh, I could see this going up, honestly. I I don't understand the bad ranking. This is a very bad the books biopic. I don't think that's a bad thing though, because mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I kind of. I was thinking about other films about this age. I think Selma's better. I was, I don't know why I was thinking about Detroit, but, uh, oh. dude, what a good movie. If we ever do a Catherine Bigelow watch party or watch through, geez, that yeah. movie is heavy. Uh, yeah. So I was kind of thinking of other 
uh, movies kind of said about this issue, the, these racial issues, and I enjoyed this. The performances are awesome. They're really great. I they whatever actor played Martin Luther King was great. Mm. Coleman Domingo walked it out of the park. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Chris Rock was decent in this. Yeah. And, the one scene that Jeffrey Wright was in is terrifying. Uh, Jeff Wright, Jeffrey Wright is great in this. Yeah. As he, he's great in everything. Um, mm-hmm. the perf- yeah. The performances are so good in this movie that I think it outweighs the fact that it's a pretty by the books biopic. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I gave it three and a half. Not mad. Yeah. I watched it again. I think he deserved a nomination. I think that. Uh, the best actor nominations are really decent. I again think Greta Lee should have been over in that betting, but um, yeah, Rustin was good. I'd yeah. recommend watching it. It's on Netflix. I think it's worth a watch, and it's it it's is short. It's yeah, under two hours. It's a nice watch easy it. watch. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not easy, but it's yeah, it's it's worth yeah. Watching. You know what and I mean? It's nothing like pay attention-y. Yeah, go watch it. Yeah. So next film I watched, I watched Peak. Halloween yeah. Resurrection. Okay. Um, yeah. Don't let the Letterbox page fool you. This has a 1.6 overall on Letterbox. That's insane. This movie is a blast. This is uh, except for the first, except for the first 15 minutes. Oh my God! How wow! Do you miss the the start of this movie. Just killing off Jamie Lee Curtis. Insane. Yeah. The, um, the opening of this movie is so emblematic of how the Halloween franchise has declined because it is so beyond disrespectful to the original movies. Like mm-hmm. Jamie Lee Curtis traps her brother and then kisses him and then just kills herself. It's crazy. Oh my god! It's she doesn't kill a- herself. Yeah, but she let goes on purpose. Oh my god! It's terrible. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, like you said, the the opening of this movie is disgraceful. It's yeah. terrible. You can uh, skip the first fifteen minutes. Here, here's my review. This whole movie, zero stars. Busta Rhymes in this movie, three and a half stars. I don't think Busta. I think Busta Rhymes thought he was in an entirely different movie than anybody else in this movie. There's a whole scene where he starts doing like kung fu, and uh. he goes hiya multiple times he roundhouse kicks michael myers out a window into barbed wire which michael myers gets lynched in it's amazing yeah Um, buster rhymes is a delight in this movie yeah my review for this movie says uh sorry let me pull it up really quick it says this movie is fucking hysterical. The Busta Rhymes one-liners are amazing. The first 30 minutes is really, really bad, but the second half had me ha- laughing so much and getting insanely hyped. Yeah, like, dude. Once they get into the house, it is so cheesy and ridiculous and out mm-hmm. of pocket, but oh my god, it's so entertaining. This is not a good movie, but... No, it it's is, terrible. It is not boring. This it is, is not. not a, <laughs> this is not a I was, movie. When Buster Rhymes kicks him for the first time, I... um And he does, like, the whole, like, Neo, like, the... Yeah. Oh. I was, like, I was cackling. I love the scene where Michael uh, stabs that girl through the door and, and then he opens the door and she just stays impaled on it. I don't know why, but it just made me laugh. Like, yeah. The kills are great in this movie. Because, yeah, they I truly mean, are. And it just added to, like, everyone thinks it's a joke, so it's just really funny. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's hysterical. This this is such an entertaining movie. Um, it, you could just throw this on at any time. I jo- Shout out to Josh K in the Real Talk Discord who told me when I went into this movie that it is peak and really entertaining. He's right. This is so hey, yeah. funny movie. Oh my god. Yeah. But that kind of counts as cancels out his Oppenheimer opinion. True. Yeah. Um, and I followed that up just because I like when you can like look in your stats and you've cl- completed a collection, you know? Um... I like that. I don't like having them almost complete. I'm like, I have to watch it. So I didn't have the 2018 Halloween logged. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to rewatch it. It's so good. It's peak. It's my it's, favorite Halloween movie. It's it's surprise. Like, I can't believe the series fell off after that. It's yeah. so good. Um, I genuinely don't understand what happened to David Gordon Green because this is so good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Laurie Strode is a badass yeah, in this movie. 
It's funny. Lori is an absolute Chad in this movie. The kills are phenomenal. The yeah. story is good. It, Where the she dude, when the guy his like jaw is like broken off on the counter. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. That movie I, it's excellent. There's there's one thing. Halloween Kills is a terrible movie, but there's a scene in it the in the when they when he kills the old couple oh my god what a good kill um i don't halloween, know if i remember that one it, it's peak um but yeah halloween 2018 is my favorite halloween movie it is a genuine good horror movie it's scary weird it the kills are phenomenal it's funny there's yeah uh, the, How the terrible is Anthony Michael Hall in Halloween Kills? <laughs> Holy cow, he's bad. Yeah, dude, the scene where Michael Myers takes the cop's head and puts it into, turns it into a jack o' lantern, peak. Insane. Oh my God. It's Insane. So peak. Yeah. This, yeah. This movie's peak. It, yeah. Uh, it, it's so good. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Um, and then I watched um, a film I found on Shutter because I've been doing the shuffle thing, um, and it's. It sometimes works out, like this time. Uh, it's a film called uh, Who Invited Them? I think you'd like this, Evan. Um, Adam and Margot's housewarming party goes well enough, except there's this one mysterious couple lingering after the other guests has, have left. Uh, and they don't know this couple. Nobody does. Um, I... Uh, oh, I've seen this on Shutter. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, it's super enjoyable, like a nice psychological thriller. Uh, um, ooh. Really, really good. Um, a recommendation for you. Yeah. <sighs> Shit, I gotta find it. Is it another dinner party one? <sighs> because I've probably seen it. No, it's on Shudder. It's, it's a, a family horror movie. Hmm. G- g- give me your next one and I'll look for it. Well, no, you're next. That's okay. three. Uh, you can do, do do one while I look for this, because my next one is uh, arrival, and I want to yap about it. Next one is called Stay Out of the Attic. Uh, a diverse group of ex-cons turned movers are convinced by their creepy client, client Vern Mueller, to pull an all-nighter for a generous pay bump. As the night progresses and rooms are cleared, they slowly uncover the horrors that exist inside this whole Victorian mansion, which includes booby traps, human experimentation, Nazi monsters, and oh more. God. Will they survive the night? Uh, what did I give this? Three stars. What is it's this fun. called? Uh, it's, on, on, uh, on, it's called Stay Out of the Attic on Letterboxd. Um, uh it's that called like a blast and it but on shutter you have to look up S- stay out of the fucking attic okay yeah i did find the movie i was thinking of i want you to watch this asap this is a very dark okay the first act is pretty serious this is a dark comedy with super crazy gory kills yeah and what's the it called sec- the second and third acts are very emblematic of like Evil Dead type horror. Hell yeah! Like OG Evil Dead. It's called Hell We yeah. Are We Are Still Here. It's eighty three minutes. Very quick watch. It's on Shutter. Okay. It is a blast. Uh, yeah, watch that. Okay. Um, it's Ma, added to watch list. You want to yeah, talk? Okay. You want to yap yeah. about uh, Arrival? Yeah, I'm gonna yap a rap about Arrival. Um, this is my first time watching it in eight years since 2016 when this came out. mm Hmm. I saw this in theaters with my brother, and we were both blown away. I don't know why I didn't rewatch it. I think I was just kind of scared because I knew it made me very emotional. Yeah. And uh, last night, I was just chilling. My girlfriend was like, I just want to color for a bit. So I was like, all right, bet. I'm going to go sit in the bedroom and watch Arrival. And th- this is a, a, a monumental film. It is... I, I I'm stacking this up against Dune Two. I have it over Dune One. It it is one of the most human films I've ever seen. It's heartbreaking and emotional. The the score. I know that the it, I was reading in the IMDb trivia that the guy who composed the score used on the nature of daylight a lot mm. in it, and that meant that he was. Uh, uneligible for original score which is tragic because the rest of the music is amazing um this is this movie has the barry linden effect where 90 percent of the shots in this movie could be a picture like a painting it's 
stunning visually. Amy Adams, who is my favorite acting, uh, current acting actress today, mm -hmm. yeah, is amazing in this. Jeremy Renner is phenomenal. He's such a great actor. I wish he did more because he's so good in this. It's. I, I've seen people talk about how it's a slow burn. I think the pacing is insane. This blew by for me. It's two hours, like, just under... It's like an hour 58. It blew yeah. by for me. I think the pacing is phenomenal. The last 15 minutes had me legit sobbing in bed. I, yeah, I was, Oh, it has everybody like that. It's I so was, sad. I was crying my eyes out. And I knew yeah. what happened. I was crying like a baby. It, it It's just a phenomenal film. And it... It makes you feel happy, and it's a very surreal ending because everything comes together. And this, like, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to spoil it. But like, it's such a surreal ending that is. It's a very complete story that makes you sad and happy, and it's such an emotional film and the interactions between amy adams and yeah. the aliens the heptapods is mm -hmm. so interesting from the moment she takes her suit off you're like okay she cares about this and she she just wants to get to a bottom because she cares and I, if we end up doing denis at some point not not if when we do denis i cannot wait to do a spoiler episode on arrival because there's so much to talk about here and yeah, yeah it, it's just it, it's a flawless film i genuinely think it's flawless i adore mm -hmm. it with all my heart it's in it, it's it's fucking amazing it's my number two denis of all time and i i genuinely am having a hard time i want to go see dune 2 again but like i mean they're very different movies yeah because arrival is a very slow burn drama but i i could see this getting to number one i i just love it so much yeah yeah um how many do you have left i just have one left all right do it uh, because i only have four left okay uh i i hit up trey when i got home from work and i was like i need to clean my house so while i was cleaning i threw on bo burnham's inside which is yeah, yeah, in, yeah. <laughs> it's in my opinion in it might be the best piece of media ever created it's a it massive a, w it is a Oh, beautiful, man. depressing, hysterical uh, piece of media touching on. It touches on mental health in a way, and uh, I think I pulled way, something doing yeah. that. <laughs> it it hits it hits the emotions of depression so well because it, 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 yeah, I it. It reflect every song reflects how Bo is feeling in such a raw way. This is a raw ass seventy minutes or whatever it is, and I I am having a hard time pulling my thoughts together because it's just tough to say. Like there's there... there's there's one song I can't remember the exact lyric, but he's saying something about like how the world is shut down. He's like, okay, I went on with my day, and it's just so emblematic of like how depression works where yeah you just don't give a fuck about anything and the, the songs the songs are so funny but the emotional songs hit in a way that strikes you to your core and yet fuck sorry <laughs> dude i i plugged in my laptop charger and, uh, can, you, can you still hear me yeah i can uh, I, I, I plugged in my laptop charger and it uh, close my laptop one sec. Oh man, I think the thing about Bo Burnham's Inside is he was able to tackle a and Are we back? create something that was so relatable at such a deep level for so many people during a, uh, during COVID. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, exactly it, yeah it's an excellent piece of media the it, it has so many funny songs scattered throughout it but those last the last act is so raw and uh welcome yeah, to the internet is a banger yeah welcome it, to the internet yeah dude that song is so funny and uh like the the last few songs like that funny feeling is one of the most raw songs i've ever seen and it's so emblematic of the time mm-hmm and it's just these contrasts back and forth for the entire song. And then Goodbye is one of the most introspective 
songs about just life and depression and uh kind of coming to terms with life and i i can't get over how real bo burnham's inside is i yeah i saw that the real talk boys are going to be reviewing this <laughs> alongside the wrong missy which cam has at a two out of 100 tell me but uh, so I was like, man, I need to watch it again. It's yeah. it's just a masterpiece. I I, I adore it with all my heart. I've seen it uh, like five times maybe now. I, I I frequently listen to the soundtrack more than I watch it just because I mm-hmm. want to hear the songs. Um, but yeah, it's a masterpiece. I think it's one of the greatest pieces of media ever created. It, it it's it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you why don't you bust through your last few? Uh yeah. Holmes and Watson. Um <laughs> why? I'm why? not joking. because I shuffled and that was at the top. And Rebecca Hall is in it, and I love oh, Rebecca Hall. Oh my god. Um I was joking. You you wanna know what this director's name is? Eton Cohen. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, and okay. my review is like, Mom, I want some Ethan Cohen. We have Ethan Cohen at home. The Ethan Cohen at home. Um, yeah, awful. John C. Riley has a few good moments in this movie, as always, but Will Ferrell, I've just... The, the older I get, the less I find him funny. Um, it's Yeah, it's terrible. Um, Ray Fiennes is in it, though, so that's a W. Um, I followed that up with Hunted, another Shudder exclusive. Um, a woman flees two serial killers who are hot on her heels in a forest. This is kind of like a modern take on, uh, Red Riding Hood, a little Red Riding Hood. Um, very much enjoyed this. You should check this out, Evan. It's very good. Uh, very tense. It's well-paced, everything like that. Um, followed that up with What Lies Beneath, directed by Robert Zemeckis, starring Michelle Pfeiffer and Harrison Ford. Uh, kind of like a thriller, mystery, drama, horror type deal. Um, really good. This one was really, really, really good. You should add this to your watch list for sure. I'm trying to, uh, what lies beneath came out in 2000. Um, I'm trying to rattle through these because my computer is going to die soon and I don't have my charger. And then I watched 1917. I'm going to turn off my camera because my mom's going to walk behind me. Um, I watched 1917 this morning. What an excellent, excellent piece of cinema. Um, I've never enjoyed anything from Sam Mendes, but I did enjoy this. I thought he really killed it here. George McKay was excellent. And that's about it. Um, I, yeah, um, my camera may come back on. It may not. My mom's just this, behind me. This um, episode went about as long as I was expecting because Oppenheimer yeah. just... I mean, I could have kept going about Oppenheimer. I, I know. I it's, know. Um, well, I'm, thank I'm, you for joining us today. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for yapping. I just... No, like, dude, don't apologize. You killed it. Yeah, uh, fun. it's fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to talk about PTA because um, little known lore drop about me is that when I first got into film, The Master was my favorite movie of all time for a long time. A long, long time. It it showed to me what cinematography can do, what performances can do, what score can do. It's scored by Johnny Greenwood, who is the guitar player from Radiohead. Mm-hmm. Um, so, And I haven't seen it in a long time. So I'm really excited to just dive into PTA. Magnolia has so much to talk about. Like... I, yeah, I'm just super stoked because I I I know we we do like short episodes like last time was really short with uh, Inception and Interstellar, but these these longer episodes are fun to just dive in because like <laughs> I don't know about you, Trey, but I I don't talk to like a lot of people in my like normal days that I can yeah about me too movies like this. So yeah, this is like been the really only fun. person outside of my family I talk to. Yeah. Well, so and this, and some of the real talk fellows. Yeah, I told this guy that I work with today to watch poor things, and I'm curious if he's gonna like it. Because yeah. I told him I love the Oscars, and he's like, oh, and he's come up to me a few times. He's like, oh, your big award show is on Sunday, and I was like, hell yeah, it is. And he's like, do you have any recommendations for me? And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you should watch poor things because they just yeah. on Disney Plus. So, but yeah, so I I just have fun just like unleashing my brain it's not cohesive a lot of the time but yeah this is really fun so yeah yeah. 
thank you for joining us for our Christopher Nolan deep dive. I yeah, am really it's been a blast. Happy because for a long time I was like, uh, I don't need to watch Following. I don't need to watch Insomnia. I'm really glad I watched them. I'm glad yeah. I rewatched uh, a bunch of these movies and um especially the batman trilogy my Dude, opinions that, have definitely changed that, that was such a fun episode with Cassie that was with him. go check um, that out it's a good episode yeah um and for for pta we will not be having cash on because he, he fucking hates pta um, oh that's an l hates pta he has the master at like a one and a half stars that's insane so um yeah but that christopher nolan who is i mean you know he's like one of the film bro directors I had a ton of fun diving in a bit deeper with his filmography and uh, bouncing off Kubrick was quite a, a switch. Yeah. So this was really yeah. fun. Yeah. And I can't wait for the next one and I, the next one after that. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. Join us Tuesday for uh, room and the seventh seal. Join us Friday for hard eight and boogie nights. And then the Tuesday after that for uh, jaws and how to train your dragon. And then the Friday after that, we'll be doing Magnolia and Punch Drunk Love. If you want to find us on our socials, I'm Trey the Film New, basically everywhere. And Evan is Evan0567 on Letterboxd. Um, thank you for joining us today. Please like, subscribe, follow, wherever you're listening or wherever you're watching. Please interact with us in some way. Comment uh, what uh, you think is Nolan's better war film, Oppenheimer and Dunkirk. Um, Tell us what your favorite christopher nolan movie is yeah do that yeah What's your favorite nolan movie yeah top three. Top all, three. All, 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 all comments including inception will be deleted promptly sure. um, i'll restore them don't worry uh yeah thank you for joining us today everybody we are glad to be here with you yeah, and we will see you week. on tuesday